improve child health as a condition for fertility decline. Okay, uh, you are uh, you you had asked for the floor here. Yeah. And... Thank you very much. I was uh, wanted to ask a question to Professor Cleveland. My name is Yvonne Bogaerts. I'm from the World Population Foundation. In one of your slides, you mentioned the the number of countries with uh, both a low population growth and a high unmet need. And there was the number of three countries having that situation. And I was wondering how that is possible, that combination of having both low population growth and a high unmet need. And if, of course, we want uh, countries with a low unmet need, but are there lessons to draw out of this, uh, well, this combination of factors? I hope the two speakers can assemble <laughs> all those questions. You, yeah, yeah. Uh, please, please. Thank you. Uh, uh, I'm going just to continue some of the discussions you had, Professor Cleland, uh, about the linking a development policy and fertility. Uh, like you, I, I'm of the opinion that the uh, uh, Population increase is a factor, but not the only factor in development and impeding development. It's one of the important factors we have to bear in mind. So if we link development policy and fertility, I want to take it, push it further, and make it a social policy and policy on health and education. And in fact, what is happening, what happened in Africa, as you rightly mentioned, was the last decade on public policy with regard to health and education. And that, in my view, has been very important to increased mortality, which your figure clearly showed and Jerome just mentioned, and that really was a factor to uh, prevent further reduction in fertility and in fact maybe even pushing it up. Because I'm sure you agree with me that one of the uh, factors in fertility decisions is the mortality of infants and mortality of children. One of the factors, not, not, uh, not the only ones. And in fact, if you look at the success cases that you also mentioned, like Kenya, and later on we have Iran and also Bangladesh elsewhere, the success has been conditioned on lowering the fair, uh, mortality and improving health and education combined with active population policy. Now what is in my view important for the, the foreign aid assistance is not just to focus on fertility, but focus on development and health and education combined with fertility and not to undermine the role of the state in this, which you again refer to in terms of the dominance of politicians at macro level. So microization of population policy will work only if we address the macro uh, education and health policies. Thanks. If one thing become clear that the decision, the motivation behind this series that after 10 years it was high time to stimulate the public debate on these issues in the Netherlands was uh, fully justified by a participation. Please, you have the floor. Uh, I'm Saeed Anissa from IIPS India. Uh, basically, I want to tell you about India's experience when we talk about uh, fertility decline. It has not happened just by family planning. It had happened with the health uh, uh, support system. First, we have pushed family planning, but that had not worked when we started looking after safe motherhood, reproductive health. Then now the, the, the decline has started. Same thing is not happening in Africa. Since so long, we are ex seeing the same age structure. Still, we are continuing with the same structure, although uh, HIV programs have started. Suddenly, a lot of funds had gone to Africa for HIV AIDS, but not much funds have gone for health sector. Although something is started at present in Africa about barefoot doctors and all other things, but health sector is totally ignored in the Africa. So with this current scenario, the same age structure will continue for next 50 years also. Unless and until there is sudden something uh, should be done for the health sector reform as well as sub, sub, reducing child mortality, we can talk about family planning before, uh, after uh, reducing child mortality. The second thing which I wanted to tell you about the European countries, uh, you are talking about retirement age and all those things, but in case of India, not many people are working in formal sector. Maybe same thing here also in Europe also. Not everybody is in working in the formal sector. It is something private sector. Are people are working informally? Are they have their own business? So there is the question of retirement. 
Thank you. Yes, please, you. No, no. Yeah, you. Thank you very much for the presentation, which really made my mind racing. And I was Your name, please. Luz Keizers of the ISS. Um, and many of the previous five speakers, they have taken up the same line, so I will leave that. The main thing is when we discussed in the preparation for the ICPD in Cairo, this main jump we made is that we didn't talk about populations being a problem, but people having a problem, eh? and redefined development in that sense. And my question now is, when this uh, whole lecture was about population and generation, I had expected a view on what is the problem we can, or what is uh, yeah, the, the world young people nowadays face in terms of population dynamics, and how and what should be done to make it a political economy which helps them to face all the problems of poverty, of deprivation, of marginalization, of environmental problems, rather than talking about, uh, I would say, technical or social engineering of fertility figures by making contraceptives available. These will be available, and there is a huge unmet need. But that's a function of a non-functioning provisioning system. So go back to the whole political economy, and what is the place of these millions of young people who not should be seen as uh, troublemakers, but people having and facing huge problems. And I would like to see your view on that. And I had the hope that that would come out in this lecture more. There is a red thread in the interventions uh, coming up. Yes, please. Uh. Yeah, my question was actually just a repetition of Mahmoud's and Luce's and also Yaron's. And I mean, so I won't repeat it, but I guess just to add on top that precisely this question of the, w I thought your first slide was very, you know, it showed this definite uh, stagnation in, in, in the mortality decline uh, or, or the stagnation in the life expectancy increase. And of course that was happening in the 80s as you made, made the point, it wasn't because of HIV. And it's to really look at the cr critical questions of why that was happening, which is you know, essentially the debt crisis and structural adjustment policies. And the fact that that led to a, a severe collapse in a lot of healthcare sectors. And I just, I don't know how we can address these questions without putting it into the framework of this economic paradigm that we've been living in for the last 20 or 30 years that guides development policy. And until we actually, you know, uh, lift off this burden, we, then we can actually seriously address, uh, it's far greater than just merely the contraception use. But I'm sure you agree with me on that. I mean, maybe not on the details, but uh, that it's a greater issue than just the contraception use. But. Oh, okay, it is indeed uh, the clear line. One other contribution, otherwise I give the floor first uh, to uh, Professor uh, Cleland and then to Professor Voorhoef. Sorry. Sorry for, <laughs> well, staple all this, uh, bring, well, gathering all these questions. Uh, would you like to react? Yeah. Rights and development. Um, I do want to see a marriage between them, but the point I wanted to make was that um, the, the, the fertility and population growth, age structure and, and poverty and hunger alleviation argument has to set the priorities. You, you don't get the attention of the World Bank or ministers of finance unless you make that argument. And, and the rights come in in determining how you set about reducing fertility. Um, and that was missing in the 70s and 80s. Although let's not pretend that all family planning programs in the 70s and 80s were coercive. They certainly weren't. That's the exception that nearly all, nearly all in Asia, hardly any coercion in Latin America or the Arab states. So the idea that old fashioned family planning programs or population stabilization programs were by their very nature coercive is, is a travesty of history. Um, and Harum, you, mortality decline and its relation to fertility it is very complex, and I don't think many people understand it. Um, the fact is that fertility has declined in a wide range of mortality situations. Sometimes infant mortality has been as high as it is now in Niger when fertility started falling. In other countries, infant mortality mortality fell to half that level before fertility responded. So there's no dose response, there's no mechanical relationship between mortality decline and fertility decline. In the long run, it is axiomatically true that once mortality